Hey guys, what's up? It's Random Travis here, and we're back with part three of the uh, episode three, Persona of Arena Ultimax Let's Play. Uh, we're going to be doing Labyrinth here, chapter three. Uh, it's pretty long, so I think I don't think we'll get to Junpei in this part. It'll probably be the next part. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into this. Blue skies and azure oceans. Dude, okay, azure oceans spread out before my eyes. A gentle breeze brushes my cheek as I stand on a blindingly glistening beach. <laughs> the sun shining from high above. The sound of the waves is calming. What am I doing here? Wasn't I going through maintenance at Mitsuru-san's place? I retrace my memories with a hint of bewilderment. <laughs> Because I had been severely damaged in the recent battles, I was to undergo full repairs at the laboratory in the Shadow Operatives facility. I was placed into a protective case and Fukasan explained what was going to happen while I guess stood nearby. Oh, this must be a dream then. I vaguely, vaguely remember this sensation. It's similar to something I've experienced a number of times before. Fukasan said that she would shut down my consciousness during maintenance, thus I should be able shouldn't be able to dream. Is this a random phenomenon occurring during my reboot process? <laughs> I'm dressed like this again. I'm wearing the uniform from Yasukami High. My arms are human arms. Since what's in one's heart can be reflected in dreams, this must be one of my desires. Still, I know it's nothing but an illusion. I understand, and I won't deny it any longer. This isn't really an appearance that I wanted to recall so soon after what happened yesterday. But it seems the me deep within my heart won't let me be that way. Still, gazing at the scenery, I cease to care about such things. I take a step towards the pier that juts out from the beach, then turn my attention to my internal GPS. Guess there's no use doing something like that in a dream. But don't you recognize where you are? Because I recognize that artwork behind you, I guess, from the first game. <laughs> I don't need my uh, GPS to know what this place is. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's where I hid a certain wish in my heart sometime long ago. Yep, that that's exactly correct. <laughs> it's so beautiful. If this really is a dream, maybe I can keep going. What does that even mean? Just while I think that, the pier under my feet crumbles and disappears without a sound. Just like that, the azure waters swallow me. Water, yeah. Splash. <laughs> the sun's light becomes dim, but I feel no anxiety. My... A mysterious sensation envelops me, as if everyone is near me and I'm connected with everyone. But eventually, when the feeling of floating becomes stronger and I lose all sense of up and down, the sea changes into a field of countless lights in the darkness. Now, wow. where could this be? Well, it's not the beach. It seems I have an odd guest. Oh, you're that misrepresent. No. Prestand? Ah, oh, yes, Miss President. We met the other day. <laughs> Misrepresent? Okay. I turn toward the voice and see a familiar woman in a blue dress. Elizabeth. She gave me a word of caution during yesterday's battle when I had been when I had been turning my eyes away from my true self. This is an unexpected reunion with the person who appeared before me like a storm and left with the same amount of force. Oh, uh, hi. Thanks a bunch for back then. I didn't get to thank you properly at the time. <clears throat> you faced yourself and overcame the ordeal through your strength alone. And the feelings of those at the scene certainly helped as well. Still, my assistance was merely the cake under the ice. Isn't that the good part, though? Uh... Under the ice? I don't know what that means, but this place is beautiful. Well, I assume Where she am I? I assume she meant icing, but 
I guess it is Elizabeth, who knows. This is a world within people's hearts. Since you are here, it's most likely that you are at rest in the real world. Now that you have gained a heart of your own and are nurturing it, I wouldn't be surprised if you were to wander here at times. That all sounds pretty complicated. What are you doing here, Elizabeth? To put it as Frank would, it is a secret. But if there was something I could say about it, I am yearning for an unseen power. Who's Frank? I... What? To put it as Frank would, but who is Frank? I don't know who that is. Huh? You want power too? Even though you're insanely strong already? Oh, all this talk of power has reminded me of something. It seems you have obtained a new power through that battle earlier. I do not mean to be rude, but my adorable personality cannot restrain my infinite curiosity for such things. Would you show it to me? <laughs> Her adorable personality. Okay. Huh? Wait. Hey, hold on now. A are you saying you want to fight me right this minute? <gasps> My, how could I have forgotten? A boisterous brawl in this place would certainly not be elegant. Uh, I'm not talking about where we are. Worry not. I will prepare a worthy stage at once. Wait, you what? Huh? She flips open the book with a fluid motion. As she does, a blue circle draws itself into the air, and the scenery around us changes. This oh yeah. Place. I'm sure this is exactly where she wants to be right now. The tranquil ocean-like area changes into a familiar place. This is the announcement room at the school that I had created. Beyond the glass in this red stained room hang the corpses of my sisters I had destroyed with my own hands. I feel a lump in my throat as the memories come back to me. I look down and see that my body has returned to its cold, white metallic one. This is my true form. Oh, are you a bit shaken? My apologies, but it seems we're being pressed for time. Before I can sort out my, my, my emotions, the aura I feel from Elizabeth begins to intensify. She's coming. Without further ado, here I come. Your fate is in the cards. Why do you say that? I love how the battles start. This is the first battle of this Let's Play. Now you get to see how bad I suck at this game. I don't suck, per se. I'm just not good. It's not just this, I'm just not good at fighting games. Please don't hold I also have been to... Uh, Huh? Oh. Haven't really used the hot uh those are named flabbers that much. That went way too quick. If I didn't use that special move, I would have got a perfect on that. That was surprising. I did not expect to be that good. <sighs> well done! I have indeed witnessed the power you have acquired. Maybe it was just me, but Labra seems to move a little faster in this than the original Persona 4 Arena. I don't know. I have to maybe test that, because I seem to move a little faster than I remember her moving before. While I was preoccupied with fighting Elizabeth, I remembered something. This is the place where I faced myself and gained something precious and irreplaceable. You could. Mitsuo-san and all the others, imagining their face causes a mysterious strength to well up from within me. Have I... have I gotten stronger? Elizabeth smiles. She calmly returns to the conversation we had... we had been having. Whether you can accomplish your wish and your heartfelt promise is up to you. If you can't do it, no one else will be able to do it for you. <sighs> but from a different perspective... That means that anything is possible depending on you. Don't you think it could be perceived that way? If I do it... That is correct. Though, it would be most important to prioritize overcoming the ordeal that is coming your way. Huh? What ordeal? Isn't this just a dream? 
the ordeal that has made itself known quite close by. I bid you good luck. Could you at least tell us a little bit more? Wait, hold on! What's this ordeal you're talking about? What do you mean? Oh, I was supposed to be reading this. The announcement room begins to fade to white and disappear into the distance, and I hear a siren-like sound. As if in sync with the siren, Elizabeth begins to grow hazy as well. Wait! You have to tell me more! Have to... <laughs> My own voice is lost in the warning sound that crashes over me like waves. I just need to talk to her just a little more. Please turn the siren off, it's very loud. Sometimes I regret wearing this headset to record stuff. moment after everything goes white, the laboratory appears in my vision. An ear-piercing, wailing sound fills the air. This is the real world. Yeah, no duh. Good. You're finally up and running. Seriously, I'm terrible with machines. This is the detective guy. Detective guy now, I think. The police shop owner persona of three. I look towards this voice and see an unfamiliar man in a black purple purple in a black pinstripe suit that doesn't even look like the word purple the man looks frustrated as he fumbles with my case disconnecting the wires leading from the terminals to my body so how about it can you move who are you i'm kurosawa the police detective do you know what a police detective is huh i was right it's a detective now i remembered <laughs> kurosawa I have no memory of this man, but for some reason I recognize his name. This must be information that was inserted into my knowledge database. Beginning personal scan. Per person personnel scan. Personnel, yeah. <laughs> Matching iris and voice print. Identified Detective Corsara. You can match the guy's iris? That's pretty impressive. Oh, are you with Mitsuru san and them? Something like that. As far as I can find in the database, he seems to be a person who can be trusted. He has a long history of private and public interaction with Mitsuo san and the other shadow operatives. I'll make this quick. There's an emergency. The car that the lady that Mitsuru Kurijo was in has gone missing. Mitsuru san? <gasps> what do you mean? An emergency? She's missing? Only after hearing th this do I pause to re examine my surroundings. That siren must be in response to these ongoing events. I'm unable to get a grasp on the situation, and only become more we'll confused. We'll talk later. We need to get to the roof. As he speaks, Detective Corsara tosses me a small bundle. Close. <laughs> I open it to find the Yasugami High uniform I've been wearing in my dream. Does he want me to wear this? I kind of like her without the uniform on. She looks cooler, more robotic-y. Though I'm still perplexed, I put on the uniform Detective Korsawa gave me and follow him as he runs to the stairway. I see that his gun is drawn as we bound up the stairs. Okay, why not just say run up the whatever. I desperately ask him the question, boiling in my mind. Are mitsuru -san and the others okay? Who took them? Go quietly. We've got to hurry here. We were being pursued, too. I'm taken back for a moment. The shadow operatives may be part of the nation's police agency. National police agency. Police agency. Jesus. But their existence has been kept hidden from the civilian population. This lab's very existence should be hidden from ordinary people. And yet, it has been attacked. Don't. The ones coming after us are human. On top of that, they're from public safety. This only confuses me even more. What's going on here? The public safety group here? Wait, what? The public safety group are at the very top of the National Police Agency's secret bureau. <laughs> they should be on our. They should be on our side. Why would they be coming after us? Uh. I bite my lip in fear. I thought that I'd finally met people who understood me, and I had 
that I had, that I finally had a place where I belong. Yet now that I've awakened, I'm being pursued by armed people once more. People who are supposed to be on our side at that. Painful memories of Yakushima return to my mind. I shake my head trying to clear it of these thoughts. I'm trying to, yeah. But it's not that easy. At that moment, Detective Korosawa speaks up as if he can see through my emotions. I know it has to be tough, but bear with it. That's how you live, by fighting. His words snap me out of my... Revere? What? Revere? Revere? I, I don't even know. <laughs> That's right. The world isn't filled with things like this. Isn't always filled with things like this. There are people who understand me and accept me. And they're all staying right by my side. Had I not made my own decision to protect these people. Thanks, Kurosawa-san. Say, wanna take a shortcut to the roof? With that, I pick up Kurosawa-san <laughs> and run ahead. I'm going to do everything I can. Hey, what are you... I jump and ignite the boosters on my back and then kick off the wall. It was a bit of a rough move, but I have determined that it's our best interest to proceed. In our best interest to proceed as quickly as possible in the situation. Here we go! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> we shoot up the staircase to the next landing, where I kick the wall again to send us flying up the staircase in the opposite direction. I repeat this a number of times, rocking, rocketing us up the extremely long staircase and allowing us to reach the door to the rooftop in less than a minute. You've got some nerve. Um, sorry, but... It's fine. Looks like I can trust you to get things done. Detective Kurosawa seems pale, but he still stands up and I see the strength of will in his eyes as he speaks to me. Well, from here on, this is a battle that only you can fight. When he opens the door slightly, the chilly air from outside rushes in through the gap. I'm putting their lives in your hands. Of course, our son opens the door fully, and the wind whips at us. So why is public safety after Looks them? Looks like we managed to get away. We got out in time. It's nice to meet you, Labrys. I'm Yukari Takiba. Oh, yes. I'm Kanamata. Wow! So it's true that you're like Aiga's son. Oh, and this is Koromaru. Huh? A dog? He's not just a pet. Koromaru might not look like it, but he can fight as well. Beginning personnel scans. <laughs> personnel scans. Everybody on this helicopter seems to be a member of the Shadow Operatives. According to the new data, or data, the new data I was given during my repairs, they are all Mitsuo-san's friends since high school. These people are all comrades who have fought alongside Mitsuo-san and the others, or, and each other. Um, Takeba-san, you're just in a kind of interesting way. Huh? Oh, this? Uh, yeah, I got picked up suddenly for my job and I didn't have any time to change. <laughs> I bet I'm never gonna hear the end of this. Also, you can just call me Yukari. I hope we get along, Labrys. But to think that organization would come after us now at such an important time. If Kurosawa-san hadn't gotten that tip, we'd be doomed. Hey, right. What's going on with those guys? Who are they again? Public safety? Oh, that's right. You don't know. Um... Kinkun politely explains the situation to me. 
Some people in the public safety department don't think well of the shadow operatives. When Mitsuo san and the others went missing, public safety took advantage of this confusion and attempted to take control of the shadow operatives' headquarters. They had been trying to remove Mitsuo san from her position and showed up at the lab in an attempt to confiscate me for evidence. To move this quickly after she disappeared, though, public safety must have some way of knowing what's going on within the shadow operatives. They say Mitsuo san set everything up. She would never. I can't understand it either. All this about honor and adult circumstances is foolish. Yeah, but there are some people in public safety who don't agree with that. Or else Kurosawa-san wouldn't have gotten that anonymous tip. Oh, that reminds me. I wonder if Kurosawa-san's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kuromaru says that he's alright. Huh? Can you understand dogs too, Yukari-san? Well, no, but I've known Kuromaru for a while, and that just seems like what he's saying. I'm sure Kurosawa-san will be just fine. Kurosawa... Wait, what? Kuromaru-san's white fur reminds me of something. Snowy, my friend, who I met on that southern island. I can tell from Yukari-san's words that all the other people here in this helicopter know each other very well. So, where are we going now, anyway? We're gonna go look for Mitsuru-san and them, right? Right. It looks like there was an increased shadow reading someplace called Inaba, and they were headed there. We'll go that way for now. Inaba. That's right. This could be a continuation of the events from yesterday. And ordeal. Elizabeth's words... Elizabeth's words from my dream echo in my mind. Don't look so gloomy. I'm sure Mitsuru Senpai's fine. She's got Akihiko Senpai, Fuka, and even Igus with her after all. Oh, right. You're Igus' sister, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. I was made just before her, though. <laughs> you seem so stiff. You don't need to be so polite with us. I heard that you were an earlier model than Igus' son. But you don't seem less advanced at all. You seem perfectly normal. Do you fight with that axe you're carrying? Um, could I touch it? <laughs> okay. The two of them are interacting with me quite normally, even though they know I'm a machine. Even though they must know what happened in Inaba, in Inaba <laughs> and about my past. That acceptance makes me happy. Gormar-san is gazing intently at me too. Yukari-san, have you been able to make contact with Yori-san? A voice from the cockpit interrupts us. Kikino-san, Mitsuro-san's maid, is in the pilot seat. She seems... more... I guess. <laughs> but if she can pilot a helicopter like this, her skills seem to have... Yeah, her skills can seem to have no limits. But I've been told that Kikino-san isn't a Persona user. Isn't it dangerous for her to come with us in a situation like this. <gasps> I completely forgot! Hold on a sec. Yukari-san pulls out her cell phone. It seems that they are trying to meet with Junpei Iori, another part-time shadow operative, and also a fellow comrade since high school. While Yukari-san is on the phone, I decide to ask ikuno san about the doubts I have. Um, psycho san you're not a Persona user, are you? Please call me Kikuno. And no, I only have the potential towards the Dark Hour. Oh, I didn't know you had that. Even the maids in the Kurijo family are amazing. So that means you can't fight shadows, right? Then ain't it dangerous for you to come along? If I have the correct information, then the grotesque monsters known as Shadows, our enemies, can only be defeated by people who can use personas. In other words, since Kikuno-san is an ordinary human, she could never defeat a shadow, even if she was the most proficient warrior in the world. If she ever encountered a shadow on her own, Kikuno-san would face immediate death. And yet, she smiles warmly as she answers me. There are more ways to deal with shadows than the direct method. We've never met in person, but I was involved in the operation to rescue you last time. We all do whatever we can to the best of our abilities to fulfill the roles we've been given. That is what it means to fight. Oh, wow! She's a true professional! To be honest, I don't understand. 
true, Kiguno-san is helping us by piloting the helicopter for us. But if that's all it took, then someone could easily program me with the ability to fly the helicopter, and there would be no need for Kikuno-san to be exposed to the danger of having to join this operation. I'd see. I can't think of any other words to say, and I look away from her. I end up meeting Kinkun's eyes, and I feel a little awkward. <laughs> it's no use, he's not picking up. This is so important. Why now? Kari-san puts down her phone and turns us turns to us again. Everyone's attention returns to getting up to speed on the current situation. Oh well, we'll just have to begin our search on our own. You know, Kikuno-san, I'm surprised you knew where we were without having to contact us at all. I traced the GPS signals from your cell phones. We're still partners with the police force, so it's no problem to do that in an emergency. Then again, we've just seen how even that doesn't always help. <laughs> You mean about Junpei-san? It's like he's going out of his way to inconvenience us. Yukari-san sighs with a somewhat astounded expression. As I reflect that this Junpei-san appears to be something of an odd person. Y you can say that. Yukari-san taps her armrest as if remembering oh something. Oh dear, I almost forgot. Labra-san, please review these documents until we arrive at our destination. With that, Kikuno-san hands me a folder. Fukasan asked me to tell you about this, but under the circumstances, would you please look through the material on your own? As I flipped through the documents in the thick file, I noticed, or I noticed that certain names appear again and again: Mitsuo, Akihiko, and the names of everyone here. What is this? It's a summary of the activities that took place three years ago. Three years ago. You must mean... I see. Whoever's behind what's going on is definitely connected to those events. Three years ago, refers to the incident leading to Mitsuo-san and the wrist, and the rest meeting one another. I haven't had the chance to go over it in detail, but supposedly it's the case that became the... Impetus... Im impetus? Uh, <laughs> Stop using all these words I don't know, Jesus, for Mitsuo-san to establish the Shadow Operatives. And the bonds that they have formed among each other. They were nurtured through the battles they took part in back then. Such deep connections look radiant to my eyes. I decide that it's important that I hear more about what happened, that as important as learning more about who or whatever is behind the events going on now. If I just wanted information on it, I could easily easily just transfer that data directly into my memory. But by actively reading it like this, I will be able to understand what happened. Her thoughtfulness of treating me the same as a person <laughs> makes me happy. Kikunosan glances at me once more and nods slightly as if approval. As if in approval. Dots question mark. <laughs> I think it looks good on you. A proper appearance is important when going out on a grand stage. Does she mean the uniform I'm wearing? Oh, I get it. <laughs> she must have been the one who prepared the Yasukami uniform that Kurosawa-san gave me. Her sudden compliment is a little embarrassing, but I can't help but smile. I mean, this uniform to me, it's proof of my connection to Yukon and his friends. Kikuno-san reacts with a small smile, then produces some other items. Hikari-san, Ken-san, I have acquired evokers and suitable weapons for you. Wow, thank you! This would be the best for me! Kinko takes a spear from Kikuno-san and sits back with a satisfi satisfied expression. The spear is longer than Kinko is tall, but it seem, but he seems confident. Wouldn't such a weapon be too unwieldy for him to handle? Kikuno-san, what is this? <laughs> Kikuno-san hands Yukari what appears to be a large pink bow that perfectly matches the suit she's wearing. Upon seeing it, Yukari-san looks baffled. <laughs> it's the ultimate arrow! <laughs> oh my god. 
it's so pink. <sighs> I acquired reference material from the publisher and had it made. Don't worry. It's more functional than the prop on your show. <laughs> oh god, okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure that makes it the best bow ever created, but... <laughs> In actual combat, I thought that using a form factor you're comfortable with would be best. Oh, I wasn't expecting you to have a logical explanation like that. <laughs> was my arrangement unnecessary? Yeah, it was unnecessary. No, it's fine. Um, I like it. Can I see it for a moment? <laughs> oh my god, okay. Why does he watch the freaking Featherman show? Isn't he a little old to be watching Power Rangers? I mean, that's basically what it is. I'm sorry to any older people that watch Power Rangers, but... You know, it, it really is a kid's show. <laughs> As Ken Gun reaches toward the bow with interest, I sense the helicopter tilt slightly to the side. We're circling around. Please hang on to something. The helicopter leads more sharply <coughs> as Kikinosan speaks. It seems that we need to take on more fuel before we reach Inaba. I reflect on Elizabeth's words as I look down on the view spreading out below us. This is just going on for forever. It reminds me of that mysterious sea-like place. Oh, is it over? Nope. <laughs> the air in the helicopter is heavy. Upon reaching the last known location of Tsuasan and the others, we immediately saw that the guardrail is broken as if a car had smashed through it. Yeah, and flipped at a 90 degree angle, which I still don't understand, but whatever. I, maybe I just don't understand how limos work when they hit a guardrail on the side of the road. We looked down the cliff and discovered a black vehicle below, unmistakably Mitsuo Sans Limousine. There were no skid marks on the road that indicate braking, and the car's body was seriously damaged. It appeared they had been going at a very high rate of speed when it hit the barrier. Everyone paled? in an instant? Yeah, that's that's definitely the right word. Everyone bowed in an instant, and we were all at a loss for words. But the driver was the only person in the vehicle, and though he was injured, there were no traces of blood from any other than him in the car. We wondered for a moment if the others had been able to leave the vehicle on their own, but if they had, they would have tried to contact us. It also seems odd that they left an unconscious and injured man behind. Furthermore, there were no footprints around the vehicle at all. We did another search for their GPS signal, but there were no signs of their whereabouts. Th that left us with only one conclusion. I hate to think about it, but does this mean that they've been captured? <sighs> Let us be optimistic and assume that they're still alive. If they were captured, then the enemy values their lives and will do no harm. We do have a chance. I carried the injured driver from the bottom of the cliff back up to the road. Kikano-san requested a vehicle to transport him to the hospital under the Karija family's care. Kikano-san made this decision since we wouldn't have been able to explain what happened to a normal ambulance. Also, it's possible that the police from public safety would take him away if we reported this to the authorities. Kikano-san asked the personnel who arrived with the, trans with the transport to try to ask the driver about what happened when he regained consciousness. That will likely be difficult, however. If this is similar to what happened last time, the driver would have no memories of the events, much like the people who captured me and transported me to Inaba last time. However, there's no guarantee that the same had happened to the limousine driver. Not long after, we were back in the helicopter, which takes us to where we are now. To be honest, everyone's at a loss about how the bad situation is. About how bad the situation is. Kinkin tries to change the topic in an attempt to divert us from our worries. It's amazing that you know how to pilot a helicopter, Kikuno-san. I heard that it's hard to hover in the mountains. Did you train for that? Only a couple of years ago, but I have taken part in an assault operation involving a helicopter. You were in an assault with a helicopter? Where? 
Just a high school dormitory. Oh, <laughs> what? Huh? Oh yeah, I remember that. I decided to learn how to pilot in the event that if someone attempted the same move, I would be able to respond properly. What are they talking about? My understanding understanding has been renewed. It seems that being a maid is a very serious and very difficult occupation. Yeah, not... It's probably not as serious as you think, really. I mean, I guess it can be difficult depending on who you're the maid for, but uh, I don't think it's very serious. Oh, damn! Well, I finally got in touch with Junpei. I don't know why, but he's already at Yasuo Inaba Station, so I told him to stay there. In any case, we should head to Inaba too. We might find some kind of clue there. Mitsuo-san's group had gone missing before sunset, and it's almost midnight now. Whoever did this must be the same person who kidnapped Labrasan. It's unthinkable anyone else would be able to do that. Mm. The question is what he intends to accomplish by kidnapping them. Kinkun flips through the reports on the events of the case up until now, seemingly lost in thought. What is to be gained by kidnapping Mitsuo-san this time? At the moment, heavy static flickers across the video displays within the helicopter. The strong win, while the weak disappear. Tonight, we will witness the hottest battles in all history. The goddess of victory is waiting to descend upon the ring. P1 fans, are you ready? Are you ready? Time to let loose and all out war! The contestants in the previous P1 Grand Prix have returned for another tournament right on the heels of the last one. These warriors will create another legend here at the world shattering P1 ring! These are battles of honor, battles of will. Sparks will fly. Some fight for pride, some fight for glory. Will this be decided by pure muscle, or will a battle of wits determine the outcome? Things are heating up! Tonight, who will win the title of champion? Who will be crowned with the winner's wreath? Whose tale of glory will resound for generations? All that remains are the dreams of the warriors. As the Grand Prix plunges into its final chapter, the P1 Climax!